Stephen, RSA's H1 2019 results have been announced today. What should we take from them at a headline level? We're pleased with the first half results for RSA. Earnings per share, 21 pence. That translates to a 15% return on tangible equity. And, and I think by financial services standards, most companies would be pleased with that performance. Uh, and I think that that has allowed us uh, to increase our dividend uh, by 3%, which is, of course, another positive as our shareholders value dividends. Beneath that, we're reporting actually the best current year underwriting profit we've had in the last 10 years, and that shows that a number of things uh, have been going right for us in the first half. Uh, now, that uh, success is tempered a little bit. We've got uh, interest rates that are a bit lower around the world. Uh, we've had, in common with many competitors, uh, a development of our prior years, which required a bit more money to be uh, set aside. And so overall, we describe the results as solid, uh, but I think uh, solid probably with a positive tinge to it. You set two key priorities for 2019. How is progress against them? Put simply, what we want to achieve in 2019 is to keep the good things about our business, the things that have been delivering, keep them going and allow them to deliver more, whilst fixing some of the things that went wrong uh, last year, which was the first down year we've had in at least uh, the last five years. And so by checking those two measures against what we've actually achieved in the first half, 60% of our business is our personal lines business, serving individual customers around the world. Uh, that's our stronghold. It performed well last year. It's performed even better this year with what uh, we describe as a combined ratio of better than 90%, which is very, very good by insurance standards. And the other thing that's gone really well for us in recent years has been our drive to become more efficient. And again, in the first half of this year, we've managed to slightly reduce our overall costs uh, and reduce them by more than that on a uh, real terms basis. So we are going strongly in the areas that have already been strong. The second thing was to fix the things that disappointed. And what we can say at the end of the first half is everything that we set ourselves to do in the first half of this year to correct the underperforming areas we have done. In fact, we've done a bit more than we set ourselves to do. And we believe that that will form the basis over the next year to see results from those actions that improve performance in our underperforming areas. There are some positive early signs, uh, but still only early. Uh, and so, of course, we uh, wait to see whether our actions have the results we want. We think they will do. How are the portfolio exits that you announced last year going? Yeah, so we announced the intention to reduce our exposure mainly to what we call London market, big wholesale international insurance, not exclusively, mainly that, by about £250 million from its peak in 2017. We did a bunch of that last year. Uh, it's, uh, we've completed the process uh, already this year, uh, and uh, there is only, I think, something like £30 million worth of business still on our books running off in the second half of the year. Uh, that has given rise uh, to a loss in the first half of the year, a £28 million loss on the exit portfolios. But I think we can say at this stage we believe we picked those portfolios correct uh, to exit. They're losing money again. Uh, and the process of exit has gone well, smoothly, with only a small amount left to run off. Looking at the results through a regional lens, what's going well and what do you think needs improving? So regionally, we have some really uh, great spots and then some areas where we think we're doing the right things, but it's yet to show through properly. So uh, our flagship business uh, continues to be our Scandinavian business, and there our personal lines area, Sweden uh, and Denmark in personal lines, terrific results in the first half. Our commercial lines business in Sweden, uh, also very, very strong, one of its record uh, years so far. Uh, Norway, which has been less strong, improved a lot from last year. Uh, so we have only one, if you like, difficult spot in Scandinavia, which is our commercial lines business in Denmark, which has had a really poor first half. We think we're doing the right things, but we've obviously got more work to do there. When we move right across the pond to Canada, our other major international business, uh, actually our Canadian business, uh, I think, will have outperformed the entire uh, industry 
in the first half of this year, which is, which is a great credit to the people over there. Uh, however, uh, that translates to an improvement over last year, but not yet the performance we want. Why is that? There are two things that we uh, need to see improving. The first is out of our control, that is to say weather. The can Canadian weather has been particularly bad uh, in the first part of this year, and that's hit the whole industry. And secondly, also in our commercial lines business in Canada, we've had poor results, uh, too many large losses, and we want that to improve. But nevertheless, uh, Canadian profits something like doubled in the period uh, and uh, on the right track. And then finally, when we come to our what we call our UK and international division, we have record results uh, from the international bits of that, from our Irish business, from our Middle Eastern business. And in our UK domestic business, we've made a solid recovery. So that was a big problem child in the last two years. Uh, we're on track for our targets this year. Uh, and so that's pleasing. Uh, but of course, in all of these areas, we think that there's much more that we can do uh, and indeed aspire to do. So what's driving the strong retention and satisfaction rates in international personal lines and can you sustain it? What we find is that there is uh, an important correlation between serving our customers well and serving our shareholders well. Uh, sometimes people think that's in conflict. We find very often it isn't because when we have a business that is proving profitable for shareholders, that allows us to be consistent, to invest in the business, to improve service levels, uh, to have uh, pricing uh, that is competitive and consistent. And all of those things uh, tend to encourage our existing customers to stay with us uh, and new customers to join us. And so our international personal lines business, which as I've mentioned, are the high performers of our group, have again grown in the last six months uh, at both profits and customer numbers. Uh, and we're very happy with that. And in particular, we're happy with the fact that right across the group, in all of our businesses taken together, more of our existing customers stayed with us this year than the year before, what we call the retention rate. And of course, it's the customers we have today that are the most important to us. There's a lot of uncertainty in the UK, new prime minister, question marks over Brexit. What impact do you think this will have on RSA's business? In a direct sense, Brexit does not really impact RSA. All of our international businesses, something like 75% of our business is international, and they are incorporated in their domestic countries. They're serving regional audiences. Uh, they're regulated domestically, so there's no passporting or other technical issues. Uh, and so in that sense, uh, Brexit doesn't impact us. The sense in which I suppose it, it may impact us is through turbulent financial markets. Uh, clearly, that might benefit us. A weaker sterling means that our foreign earnings uh, count for more in sterling terms. Um, but interest rates bouncing up and down, uh, other actions the Bank of England might take, all of these mean that we have to be cautious in navigating a, a, a uh, turbulent financial world, even if our own basic business is consistent. Lastly, how do you see the outlook for RSA for the second half of 2019 and into the new year? Well, we believe in what we're doing. We believe that RSA is a terrific collection of businesses, and we believe that we're making the businesses better. And we think that those actions, on a smooth basis anyway, will continue to show through and our company will progress. Of course, we're also in an industry with some volatility. We can't control always things like the weather or individual large losses, and so there's always a health warning over that. And as I've mentioned before, uh, in an era where interest rates, instead of going up, look like they're coming down, that provides all insurance companies uh, with a bit of a headwind. So we're cautious. We know that we can be bounced around uh, a little bit, as c our competitors can. Uh, but we think notwithstanding that caution, uh, we can make continuing progress. Stephen Hester, thank you.